This is going to be called How to Handle Whatever a Jealous Preacher Throws Your Way or How to Handle Whatever the Devil or the World Throws Your Way. But if you watch every group or camp of preachers today, you will notice that a lot of them are jealous of each other. They will see the success of one and how their following is growing and they begin to envy them and hate them secretly in their heart. And I was thinking about this as I was reading a story about David and Saul. David had just had the greatest victory of his life by killing Goliath in 1 Samuel chapter 17. And many preachers will envy another preacher when they see that he has just had a great big victory in his life. One that may have gained him a lot of attention or popularity. Kind of like the Burlington Revival with C.T. Townsend. You saw how he got a lot of hate after that. Or kind of like how they all hate Robert Breaker. They didn't really mind him back before he was very popular. But then when he got a huge following, uh, they, he started getting a lot of hate from everybody. I'm not saying that popularity is always a good thing. But when God really starts using a person... Many times a lot of people will start to hate that person. Just like David just had a big victory in 1 Samuel chapter 17. And now look at chapter 18 of 1 Samuel. In 1 Samuel 18, 7, it says, And the women answered one another as they played and said, Saul hath slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands. So David killed one giant, and they're saying he killed ten thousands. Well, Saul has killed way more than David, and they're just saying Saul has slain his thousands. So he get, begins to be a little bit jealous. And a lot of times I've seen old preachers who've been serving God a while and have had many souls saved and many sermons preached and a lot of accomplishments. And some young guy comes along and gets way more shine in the eyes of Christians than they have ever gotten. Even though the young guy really ain't that great of a preacher compared to them even. It's just that God is using him at that certain time more than he's using them. But who's done more for God, the old man or the young man? Obviously the old man. And still a lot of them will find fault in the success of the other preacher and begin to be jealous. And many times they're forgetting that success isn't about numbers and it isn't about popularity and being recognized by others. And really, they're forgetting the less glory you get for the things you do down here, the more you get when you get up there to heaven. And First Samuel 18.8 8 says, And Saul was very wroth, and the saying displeased him. And he said, They have ascribed unto David ten thousands, and to me they have ascribed but thousands. And what can he have more but the kingdom? So Saul is jealous of David because they're saying he's slain ten thousands and that he's only slain thousands. When really, who's killed more? Saul's killed more. Notice the Old Testament is all about a physical kingdom. Saul says, what can he have more but the kingdom? Oh. <laughs> That's not what the church age is about. The church age is about a spiritual kingdom. And Saul is worried about his physical kingdom. And that's what a lot of men today are worried about. They're worried about their own little kingdom that they're trying to build for themselves. So they become jealous of the success of another preacher. And they think that's going to interfere with their kingdom getting bigger. And this is because they're trying to be the greatest. They're trying to form their own little Baptist kingdom with them on the very top. And it's like they have to take out other men around them to be on the top or stay on the top. First Samuel 18, 9 says, And saw I David from that day and forward. Once you do something good and God blesses you openly for it, there will always be men who will find fault with everything you did and point out every sin you ever did and look, look on your... Look on the internet to dig up dirt on you. 
They'll look into your family history, and if you had a cousin who was arrested, they'll bring it up and say, he had a cousin that's arrested. He can't be right with God, or something stupid like that. They're always digging up dirt and finding fault to try and discredit another person. So Saul eyes David from that day forward. So number one, how to handle a jealous preacher. That is to be on your best behavior. Now you should be doing this anyway, but when you have a preacher and all his little minions examining your ministry and your life, you need to make sure that you don't have anything going on that they can use to ruin your testimony and your ministry. Because a lot of these men won't stop until they have killed your ministry and your marriage and your character, your job, and whatever else they can. They just have a ministry of killing everyone else's ministry. And when I say that, you can probably think of a few people right now that their whole ministry is just based on bad-mouthing other preachers and trying to ruin their ministry. 1 Samuel 18.10 says, And it came to pass on the morrow that the evil spirit from God came upon Saul, and he prophesied in the midst of the house, and David played with his hand as at other times, and there was a javelin in his hand. Notice that David is just doing the Lord's work. He's doing what he did at, as at other times to take the evil spirit from Saul. So, number two, what do you want to do? How do you handle a jealous preacher? How do you block javelins from jealous preachers? Just keep serving God. Just keep doing what you do to fight the devil. As I heard the great preacher Danny Castle say, don't worry about what other preachers are saying about you and how they're bad-mouthing you. Just keep running and the truth will prevail. So all you have to do is keep teaching and preaching the truth and whoever is right will be right at the judgment seat of Christ. Don't let them scare you out of the ministry. Don't let them intimidate you because maybe they have more knowledge than you have. Because God doesn't always use men with a bunch of knowledge. The Bible says great men aren't always wise. The disciples were unlearned and ignorant men. Uh, sometimes God will use the lesser man so that he gets the glory for it. But notice, an evil spirit came upon Saul. And whenever a preacher is jealous and hating his brother in Christ, there's definitely an evil spirit on him. It's never right to badmouth your brother in Christ over every little thing. And a lot of these preachers just watch each other so that they can have something to preach about next week. And if the preacher they hated quit preaching, they'd have to quit too. But also notice the evil spirit was from God. And a lot of people don't know this, but the Lord will raise up evil men as a judgment. And he will put a lying spirit in the mouth of preachers. And in the tribulation, he's going to send a strong delusion. You can read about those things in the Bible. And David had just got the victory in 1 Samuel 17. And I believe that God wants to keep you balanced and humble. He doesn't want you to be exalted above measure. So he may put somebody or another preacher in your life just to bug you to death to keep you humble. So that's what he did with David, I believe. The evil spirit was from God. Uh, Saul was not a good king. God was judging Saul. And he was using Saul to keep David humble. Or he would have been exalted above measure. Similar to how Paul had a thorn in the flesh so that he wouldn't be exalted above measure. Now look at 1 Samuel eighteen eleven, And Saul cast the javelin, for he said, I will smite David even to the wall with it. And David avoided out of his presence twice. Notice it says David avoided out of his presence twice. So next, the next thing you need to do to handle a jealous preacher or a jealous Christian is to just avoid them. Romans sixteen seventeen says, And I beseech you, brethren, Mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. There's some people you need to avoid. If somebody is just out to cause trouble and division because they're jealous or whatever else, the best thing to do is just stay away. Don't get caught up in it. Saul has unclean spirits because envying and strife is connected with devils.
If you look at James three fourteen through 16, it says, But if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. When men preach Christ of envy and strife, as Paul talks about, it shows the spirit behind them. Even when you preach against a false doctrine, if it's something little, you really don't have to even mention the man's name every time. If you just preach and teach what's right, then your people will know the false teacher when they hear him. Your whole ministry doesn't have to be about inserting preacher's name here and just slinging mud at him the whole time. Sometimes, sometimes a person likes to throw in another person's name for attention. Sometimes a, a lesser known preacher likes to throw in a big shot preacher's name because it makes them feel big for attacking that person. And people like drama and they like gossip a lot of times. They like to hear men causing drama and gossip. And they'll, they'll spread drama and gossip and disguise it by saying they're exposing a false teacher or exposing a false doctrine. But really they're just slinging mud at another person that's not doing anything but serving God. Just avoid people who cause division. Avoid people who sow discord and gossip and just backbite all the time. Now look at 1 Samuel eighteen twelve. It says, And Saul was afraid of David, because the Lord was with him and was departed from Saul. Next, remember that the Lord is with you and not with them in this matter. If someone is harass harassing you and slandering you and trying to tear down your ministry, the Lord is not in that. The Lord ain't in that. The Lord is with you. And David was just playing his harp. Maybe you have just been serving God and and then somebody's just coming along and attacking you. That's what's happening with David. Saul was jealous and full of the devil. The Spirit of the Lord departed from him so much that he couldn't even get anything from God anymore. You read in 1 Samuel 28, 6, And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not, neither by dreams nor by Urim, nor by prophets. So notice a lot of trouble making preachers and people like this, as I said, will get to where all their ministry revolves around is killing another person's ministry. And I have some in mind when I say it, but it really isn't even necessary to even say who they are. But when all you do is find fault and expose the sin in everyone else's life, it's like all you end up doing is just bad mouthing them and that's what your whole ministry your ministry is not about teaching the bible anymore it's just about bad mouthing and correcting everybody and then it's like it's like god isn't even showing you anything anymore so instead of searching the scriptures you're searching google and you're searching facebook and you're searching twitter and you're searching people's family history so you can dig up dirt and find fault when really you're supposed to examine yourself. We're supposed to prove all things. But really, you need to examine yourself first. And in 1 Samuel 24 and in 1 Samuel 26, David has the opportunity to kill Saul. But you know what David always says. If you've read First and Second Samuel, he's always saying, in 1 Samuel 26, 23, The Lord rendered to every man his righteousness and his faithfulness, for the Lord delivered thee into my hand today, but I would not stretch forth mine hand against the Lord's anointed. He didn't want to stretch forth his hand against the Lord's anointed. You may not have thought about this, but those jealous preachers could be really called by God and really used by God for good. And it's not up to you to straighten them out, so don't try to beat them at their own game. Uh, don't try to throw a javelin back at them. Uh, you don't have to worry about taking them out because if they're so full of pride, then God will let them fall. Proverbs sixteen eighteen says, Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. And you know what happened to Saul in First Samuel 31, 4. It says, Then said Saul unto his armor bearer, 
Draw thy sword and thrust me through therewith, lest these uncircumcised come and thrust me through and abuse me. But his armor-bearer would not, for he was sore afraid. Therefore Saul took a sword and fell upon it. So he took a fall. He fell on his sword. Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. And a lot of these guys who are preaching Christ of envy and strife are just self-destructing. If they're trying to build their own kingdom for their own glory to make it to the top, then they're just self-destructing. You don't need to do anything. They're self-destructing themselves. The best thing to do is to just stay away from the preacher fights and just keep running the race, keep reading the Bible, keep teaching the Bible, keep praying, pray for your enemies, pray for the men who talk bad about you and that hate you. Don't try to become popular by taking out all the other popular preachers. But this has just been a quick study on how to handle jealous people and the things that they'll throw at you in your life.